Up next, a review of the trick-taking card game Gorus Maximus. Gorus Maximus was designed by Connor Magui and published by his Canadian publishing company Inside Up Games. It features some rather over-the-top artwork from Quan Shai Moria. What? Just pointing at it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that threw me off. I'm like, Sean, sorry. <laughs> I thought you were trying to get my attention. All right. What was I saying? Uh, features some over-the-top artwork by Quan Chai Moria. Gorus Maximus was funded on Kickstarter in 2018 and published and delivered in 2018. Now, the copy I reviewed was the standard retail edition of the game. As usual, the best way to see what you get in a copy of Gorus Maximus is to watch our Gorus Maximus unboxing video. For those of you out there who haven't had a chance to watch that video, what's in the Gorus Maximus box? All right, first, I do want to mention, I forgot this in the notes, that, um, well, I wasn't, I was given a copy of Gorus Maximus by Connor at Origins 2019. Uh, as far as I know, there were no strings attached. It wasn't like, hey, I want you to review this game, but I'm reviewing it anyway, but I do want it out there that I did not pay for this game. It was given to me when I was doing an interview with him about a completely different game. Uh, so, the box itself. First thing I noted was the fact that it has a QR code on the box for how to play. Cool. I want to see that more often. The other thing is, my God, is this a solid box? Like, it is like a thick, sturdy, like, I, I, you should ship stuff in this box. This is a nice, solid box. Not that that really matters that much for gameplay, but I was just impressed by the quality of the box. Uh, inside, there are multiple rule books in three languages. I think it was French, German, and English. Rules are only eight pages long, include a ton of examples. Clear, easy to read, understand, though a little bit tiny on the font. And the Canadian flag for English is a nice touch that makes us Northerners happy to see. I do agree. I got to admit, that, that is a nice bonus. Uh, the box then includes a solid plastic box insert, which is uh, well-designed, holds everything in place. It holds a deck box, a pack of cards, two stacks of poker chips, and a clear plastic clip. Now, the poker chips are used to track scoring in the game are extremely well-made. They have the, the weighted poker chips. They got that great feel in your hand. And I got to say, are really a step above. Like, I was not expecting to open a trick-taking card game and get, like, solid poker chips. That was a very nice touch. Another interesting touch is the tuck box I mentioned. Now, this is a box for holding cards. And what I didn't know when I recorded the unboxing video is that this is a travel box. It's just big enough to fit the components you need for a five-player game of Gorus Maximus, including cards that replace the poker chips. So if you know you're only going to have five players at your game night, you just pack this tuck box and leave the rest at home. I thought that was a cool upgrade from, again, something you don't normally see. So not often a game provides its own travel kit unless it's designed from the start as a travel game. Yeah, like basically you get the travel version of Gorus Maximus with Gorus Maximus, which is, heck, more games should do that, actually. Yeah. I would love to get a copy of Quirkle with a copy of Travel Quirkle with it. That's That would be an odd, awesome, start a trend, Connor, please. <laughs> <laughs> the cards themselves are uh, decent, I would say. Uh, they are thinner than standard playing cards. Um, Repeated riffle shuffling is not being kind to them, so I make sure to flip them every time to make sure they don't crease too much. Um, not the best card quality, but not terrible either. Uh, now, the cards do feature a variety of rather bloody gladiators and beasts uh, in five different suits. Cards are numbered 0 to 15 in each suit. Each number features unique artwork where the color changes in each suit. So, like, whatever, the, the bear is always a 3, but, like, the bear has a blue background and a bear has a yellow background. Uh, information is easy to read, but it's only in one spot, which I thought was weird for a card game. So the, the, the suit information, the card number and how much points it's worth are in the top left corner only, whereas most card games it's repeated in both. So I was surprised to not see that. Everything's just in the one spot. Yeah, this was more frustrating than I expected during play. It's not a deal breaker by any means. No. And I get that they wanted to make sure that their art was right side up, but more handling of the cards every time you play and for those who don't sleeve especially will mean the cards get that much more wear and tear over time and we just mentioned they're a little thinner than a normal playing card already yeah. so yeah it's one of those once you get dealt your hand you're gonna have to flip over a bunch of the cards which is it's kind of annoying now finally there is um one extra card which is for tracking which suit is trump or what they call it in the game it's it's what gladiatorial uh I can't even remember what, what house is being favored by the crowd or something is the theme. Sorry, it's Trump. 
Uh, and then there's a plastic clip that goes on that card. Now, we had some real complaints about a sliding clip in another game recently. This one work better? No, like no one should put plastic clips in board games, I think, like seriously. Uh, this is a cheap piece of plastic, and every time I slide it on that card, I feel like I'm going to like damage the card. It's going to crease it. It's going to strip it. And most games, what I do is I just put the clip on top of the, the – if you look on the blog post, you can see a picture of the card. It's got colored bands, and I just put the clip on top. Now, since I'm doing that, what I would have loved, and I think this would have been an awesome upgrade, is like a little gladiator meeple or something. I could just stand on the appropriate house. That would work even better than the clip. I'm really disappointed by this clip. But you know what? It doesn't really affect the gameplay. All right, well, how do you play this gladiatorial trick-taking game? All right, so you build the deck. So how many suits you use and which cards in each suit is determined by the number of players. And every player count from one, yes, this does play solo, all the way up to eight has a different deck setup, all of which end up being there being exactly 10 cards per player based on the player count. Each round, the entire deck is dealt out to all players. So it's perfect information for a card game, which is cool because it means, well, assuming you're good at counting cards, you can keep track of all of that. And this is a big plus, like real trick taker, real trick taking game lovers are gonna be card counters. You can definitely card count in this game. Now, how much time and effort is it to set up the card sort for each player count? Like if you wanted to play a few times and you change player count every time, is that, is it problematic? I don't think so. Uh, in, in general, as long as you put the game away properly, in my opinion. So I, I think your big thing is at the end of the game, make sure you sort all your, your stacks and take the time to put them in numeric order. Cause all it is is a matter of pulling out so many cards each time. So like, I'm gonna forget the exact numbers, but if you were playing six players, you do not use the 14, 15, and I don't think you use the one, two, and three, or it might be the one, two, I don't remember the exact number. So you're just pulling four colors out of each suit. Um, plus with the lower player counts, you're not even using all the suits. So like when we play three players, you only use three suits. So you can just toss, as long as your cards are separated when you're done playing, which isn't, hard to do like they're very well color coded it's very easy to see and for people with color blindness there are symbols in that also show instead like i we never talked about what they were but like i think the blue is a fist and the green is an arrow or whatever we always just said blue green yellow with the people we're playing with but we didn't have anyone playing that had color problems or eye problems and we don't really worry about theme on this show too often so you know it's yeah. just color yeah gladiatorial schools I think is what it is. Whichever school is prominent at the time, I'm sorry. It, it's a trick-taking game. I'm going to call it Trump. Uh, so when do you actually start playing? The first card led sets the Trump suit for the turn, the whatever important house, and that's marked on that Trump card with that play plastic clip either on or on top of the card. Everyone that has to follow suit, just like every other trick-taking game, you cannot play off. If you can't follow suit, you can play off suit. Highest played card wins. Highest played card in the lead suit wins. Unless someone played Trump, then it's the highest Trump card wins. Like, that's every trick-taking game you've ever played with any deck of cards. Now, the important change, and this is kind of what makes the game, is what they call issuing a challenge. Now, this is done by playing the exact same numbered card as the player before you. When you do this, Trump changes to the suit used to challenge. What this means is that Trump can change even multiple times in one hand of cards. So it's almost a blend of like a Euchre and a Crazy Eight yes. uh, for those casual card players out there. Yeah, I, I was comparing you. I said Euchre. Crazy Eights is probably a better comparison. I was thinking Euchre and um, and Uno, but yeah, same same idea. Now the player that takes the trick gets the lead for the next round. They're going to pile up all their winning tricks in front of them. No Trump is set at the beginning of the game and only changes if someone issues a challenge which is, is an important distinction. It doesn't change every round. Once a round's done, you're gonna look at all the cards that you've collected, and then you're gonna add up the point value of the cards it's supposed to represent the fame of your gladiatorial house or whatever. The player with the most fame wins and takes one of the scoring tokens. Now these poker ships literally only say one and two on them, because what happens is if you win a second round, you flip your token, and the person who wins the third round wins the entire game. Now, it's also worth noting that there are different point values on the cards, and every card is worth a different point amount, and some of these are negative. And here is the other shining example in this game, the, the killer app. And what this means is that this is not a game where you want to try to take all the tricks. Rather, it's about knowing when do you want to take a trick and when you don't, 
and knowing when to play off suit and punish the player you think is in the lead. And this is really where this game shines and steps away from your average trick-taking game. The fact that in some games, your high card will cost you points really mm -hmm. adds some strategy What to what could really easily be almost any trick-taking game with a standard deck of cards you see down at the Legion on a Saturday afternoon. Yeah, <laughs> I'd love to see bringing this one out to a Knights of Columbus with that artwork. Uh, so regards to overall thought, the first thing I do have to talk about is that artwork. I, I gotta say I'm not a fan. Um, while I understand the game is Gorus Maximus, it's basically saying maximum gore, I find it to be a bit over the top. There is blood everywhere on every card. They even did an effect to make the blood shiny. Uh, there's body parts and limbs flying everywhere. There's a, a lion belching out internal organs. It's overly gratuitous. And yeah, now for the unboxing on, on video on YouTube, I actually censored part of the game box. Now, while this was mostly done tongue in cheek, at the same time, YouTube thumbnails are visible by anyone. This yeah. game, even the cover art, not. Yeah, it's definitely not. Now, I admit, the art has no impact on gameplay. And I even realized while playing, and this was pointed out by another player first, uh, the focus is when you're playing is on that information in the top left corner, which means while you're playing, you don't really notice the art, like at all. You almost gloss right over it. But the problem is that art is gratuitous and it is over top. And it, this is a really slick trick-taking game that I think my kids would love, especially Big G. But there is no way my kids would play this game. My kids don't even want to look at the cover of the box. My kids are very gore and blood adverse. And the artwork would literally scare them away from playing. And they'd probably have nightmares that night. Like, I would have much preferred the game be more accessible and family-friendly. And that's because it's actually a really good game. Yeah, it's it's interesting because they could have done Gladiator and not had gore. Like they yes. could like they could have they could have played with the theme and not gone to the place they did. But it's, it's just you know, they it's made a choice. Yeah, they made a choice too far. Now that being said, content aside, the art is actually great quality. Yes, there's some real humor and even continuity, so that when you spread out an entire suit, in order, it makes a panorama. Now, while not only that, it wraps, yes. we found out. <laughs> and while the style may not be appropriate for everyone, it is really well done. Yeah. Art. I, I have friends that love it. Cat loved it, thinks the art's fantastic. All, all the power to him. And I will note that uh, we did get a comment from Connor that if we do want a family-friendly version, there may be something in the works. So that's interesting to know. Because overall, this is literally one of the best trick-taking games I have played at high player counts. While the game's okay with two and three, it really starts to shine once you add in more. And so far, based on all the times I've played this, six seems to be the ultimate player count. But this plays eight. How many trick-taking games play eight people and play it well? Now, six, though, I think is is the sweet spot for this game just because the highest number, which is a 13 in a six-player game, is a minus two-point card. So this leads to those interesting decisions during the game and really rewards players who can keep track of who's got the 13s and how many have played. And that's enough. Like, for my level of play, that's the card counting I can do. I can keep track of the five 13s. I'm not going to keep track of where every card is. And in particular, actually, the eights in this game are very important. They're minus four points. So when I play at six players, I'm watching the eights and the thirteens. Every other card, I don't know who's got what. Yeah, no, the fact that this game is playable at higher uh, higher player counts and is not just, oh, look, it's another four-player trick-taking game is a really nice touch. Uh, yeah. And the way the game changes at each player count, just the added bonus, uh, to make it that much more, uh, you know, strategy involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, overall, this is a great high-player count trick-taking game. Uh, if you like Euchre, Hearts, Spades, or those kind of games, and you find yourselves often with a group of five or more players, I strongly suggest checking out a copy of Gorus Maximus. Though, as Deanna said, watch who you're playing with, right? This is not a game my mom's going to want to play. This is not a game I would have broke out at the Knights of Columbus. It's just not the right place for it. Now, also, I didn't mention it here. I do have a promo for this game, the Man Bear Pig. I'm not going to get into it here, but if you head over to the blog and check out my Boris Maximus review, I do give details on what this card does and why you might want to try to seek out a copy of the Man Bear Pig yourself. Well, for a somewhat more in-depth look at Goris Maximus, check out Mo's written review over at tabletopbellhop.com 
just click on reviews. 